today we was watching um, you can get you can view it yourself on you on YouTube I think it was wasn't it Wendy the you know the guy who played for Jesus in Mel Gibson's movie The Passion of the Christ well, if you go online you can see an interview with him because he's he's received Jesus as as Lord and Savior for real you know, you'd have thought it'd have been pretty difficult to pay, play Jesus and not and not do that in the first place. But have a look at it online, and it's it's interesting what goes through people's mind playing Jesus. Amen. You know, there's been some famous people do it over the years. But one of the things that t- one of the things that got him thinking, and it, I'm sure it happened with you and, and and me and other people who have said yes to Jesus, yes, yes to faith in God through Jesus. However you've done it, you know, call it what you want. But one of the things that got him was he couldn't quite comprehend the sacrifice of Jesus. And they reckon that Mel Gibson actually toned that down somewhat. If you've ever seen The Passion of the Christ, you'll see it was quite horrific, really. You know, the pain and the suffering and the sacrifice. But have a look at that and uh, you can uh, see for yourself. He's, He's a really... You can tell he's an actor and a professional in that, but he's, he's, it's really inspiring, is, is what I would say. Nearly as inspiring as Kenny. Only nearly, Kenny. So Kenny's going to speak for us tonight, and uh, so, if you're ready, bro. Good evening, everybody. Um, before I go in today's message... Um, because this will be the first time I will be speaking this year here to the glory of God. And in the next five minutes, I will just brief you on what the Lord did last year, 2014. By the special grace of God, through the ministry, God was able to sponsor five orphans, full sponsorship. And um, three orphans, partial sponsorship, and uh, two orphans in, in the university, partial sponsorship as well. And uh, to the glory of God, 14 widows were fed regularly last year. And um, three widows amongst them were empowered to start their own business to also help other widows in Nigeria. Then in Uganda, a 25-year-old orphan was identified by the Holy Spirit. This lady has a vision to also look after orphans. To the glory of God, she was sponsored to and empowered to register an NGO and to start a poultry business that will help her look after her fellow orphans. Also, a widow was identified by the Holy Spirit also as well. She also has a vision to look after widows. Before we met her, she was uh, having a small business doing um, local peanuts, peanut butter. So she was empowered to, before she was sharing a shop with another person, she was empowered to rent her own shop. She was also empowered to standardize her product. Now, small local shops are coming to collect her products. So she said she's enlarging her coast, and uh, she's also helping our fellow widows, even as we speak, to the glory of God. Also, more than 30 souls were won to the kingdom of God last year, and uh, more than 100 souls are still being worked on, even as we speak now. The aim is to identify and empower people who are passionate, who are compassionate as well in helping the humanities. And to the glory of God, as you travel everywhere, Holy Spirit is himself identifying them one by one. A lady shared a story because the pastor testified to it. Before we came, she received a prophecy that a group of people will be coming and this group of people will empower her for her to be able to attain the vision God has given her. And I really thank God because God used us to fulfill the promise, I mean to fulfill the prophecy that was given to her. 
and now she's bubbling the Lord, and the Lord is blessing her the more. The work of God continues to the glory of God. Starting from next week, Friday, we're going to start a village evangelism, which will last for about 12 days. And uh, the Lord has prepared us, and we'll be there again to the glory of God. And when I come back, I will come with good news also. What do you say to that? I love this, what Mother Teresa said. She said, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a a stone across the waters to create many ripples. So the little that God is doing, the ripples have been created. Even if it's only one person doing it, ripples have been created. And the meaning of those ripples is lives have been impacted, no matter how small the numbers are, to the glory of God. So that's just the gist of what happened last year. We're going to have a newsletter very soon, and uh, it's going to be distributed. The worst thing that can happen to any man is not to be saved. And the next worst thing in life is to be saved and not to enjoy being saved. Joyce Meyers said this. The next worst thing is to be saved and not to enjoy being saved. You see, it's pathetic seeing the so-called believers still going through the same thing unbelievers are going through without victories. It's pathetic. And that's why we find out in, I mean, in places that we go to. The essence of being saved is to attract on unsaved to be saved. If my life is not attractive unto the unsaved, they would never come to my God. And this is one of the major reasons why we still have unbelievers all around us, because our lives are not attractive at all. Tonight is to to challenge us, even myself, to stand up to the call of God in our lives and to know the main purpose why we have been saved. Somebody once defined discipleship as somebody that has been saved to save others. In our journey, if our lives are not attracting others, that means we are failing in the call of God upon our lives. Tonight, I will speak briefly. The last time I spoke, I spoke on the, the Word of God, and I'm going to continue on this tonight. Because it's the only ingredient, is the only ingredient, the only sugar that you can, have, you can put in our tea, those of us who use sugar. And it's the only salt that our soup needs for us to grow and do what the Lord has called us into. I would like, us to, I would like to remind us that the ministry of the devil is to steal, is to kill and to destroy. Those are the three ministries of the devil. In everything he does to humanity, he kills, he destroys, and he steals. But Jesus Christ said, I have come to give you life. Life and abundant life. Not ordinary life, but abundant life. The synonyms to abundance is Oversufficient life, overflowing, bountiful life. I've not come to give you only life, but abundant life. Another adjective that qualifies life. Not ordinary life, extraordinary life. We are born again to live extraordinary lives. 
And today, I stand to assure all of us that that fountain of life is with us and is with you and is with me. The psalmist said in Psalm 36 verse 9, he said, Indeed, the fountain of life is with you. In your light will see light. When we look at the life of Jesus Christ, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 12, summarize the life of Christ. That chapter calls him life. That chapter calls him light. And when Jesus Christ was speaking to his disciples and was referring to us as well, he himself called us what? Light. He himself is, is light. And he said, you are also light of the world. He even went and said, the light cannot be hidden under the bushel. It's, you are the light on the mountains that shine to the people around you. That's what he calls me, he calls you. Light that shines. You know, even God himself could not create in darkness at all. The first thing he did was, let there be light. Because everywhere was in darkness. And in darkness, the Bible says, everything was chaotic, was in chaos. The only thing that brought it into order was light. And he said, let there be light. The correct interpretation is, Light, be. Light, be. He commanded it to be. <laughs> this same God created us in his own image. He created us to have his own character. When God had created us in his image, said, light, be. And he began to create. In other words, Every life that is in chaos, you have been empowered to speak light into that darkness. I have been empowered to speak light into that darkness. Light, be. <laughs> Sickness thrives in, in, in darkness. That's it. The moment sickness sees light, <laughs> it runs away. The psalmist said, The stranger shall hear my voice. That's the darkness. Because anything in your body that is strange, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said, my, my father will uproot everything that he has not planted. He said, the stranger shall hear my voice and they shall come out from their hidden places. They shall be afraid. Strangers represent darkness. And when you speak the word of God, which is light, it eradicates darkness. When light shines, Darkness disappears. The cloud of darkness dissipates when light shines. Only this light, as small as it is, will illuminate this area. You, we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world that shines within our vicinity. Before I go ahead, I want to, to lay emphasis on the Word of God that is the light as well. The psalmist in Psalm 119, 
if you read verse 5, verse 7, verse 12, it says, the entrance of the word of God is light. It brings light. So everywhere the word of God is mentioned, we should always bear in mind that it means light. When this gets into our spirit, we will not joke with the word of God because the moment we get the word of God into our spirit, we are getting life, I mean light, into our spirit. And when light comes, then illumination comes. And when illumination comes, nothing that has been surviving in darkness will ever be found in our lives. It happens to me, so that's why I can testify to it. And I've seen it happen to people, not in the video, life. The moment a person receives light, if that person has been praying for healing, healing comes immediately. If that person has been praying for a breakthrough, the moment light comes, shines into his spirit or her spirit, that poverty is eradicated. Light is the most powerful thing that we enjoy as a believer. The word of God is light. It's light. Let's open our Bibles to Mark chapter 11. It's just a buttress on how powerful the word of God is. Mark chapter 11. We're going to read from verse 12. Does anybody have Amplified Bible here? Amplified Bible? Okay. Do you mind reading it for us, please? Oh, oh, 12, 13, and 14. And see, in the distance, the fig tree Thank you very much. Jesus Christ was walking along the street. He was hungry. And he needed to eat something. So he approached this fig tree. And when he got there, the tree was green, but there wasn't fruit on the tree. Then he spoke the word. And what happened? When we read... When we read from verse 20, early in the morning, as they were passing by, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots up. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed is withered. In other words, the fig tree that you spoke to, you spoke the word to, did what? Wither. The scientist has this thing to say. A fig tree that is cut down to the tree, I mean to, to, to the root, takes almost four years to wither. It takes a fig tree to wither when it's cut down. But the word of Jesus Christ dried it to the root within 24 hours. <laughs> Most preachers lay emphasis on the wither tree. But I've chosen to lay emphasis on the word of God spoken to the wither tree. 
Because that is potent enough to achieve anything in this life. Jesus Christ was teaching the disciples the lesson of their lives about the potency in the Word of God. He said, Cursed be you, this tree. And immediately the non living thing dried up. Can you imagine if he had said it to a number of crowds? The tree had ears to hear. And he spoke to the tree. And the tree obeyed. If a tree could obey the word of God, why won't the devil obey the word of God? If the tree could obey the word of God, why won't that sickness obey the word of God? Why won't that situation that condition obey the word of God when it's spoken. In Nigeria, because of power outage, we use generators. I was the last person that switched off the generator, and the following morning I was going to, I was very hot, and I told my cousin to switch on the generator. And he got there and said the generator was not working. I said, why? We tried all we could. The generator was not working. So I said, go and call a repairer. The man came, he looked at it, and he said, it's going to cost you so so amount of money. The amount of money he called aroused my holy anger. I said, no, this is a devourer. And I now sent my, my cousin, I said, for you to know that God will serve, the, I mean, the Lord will serve is mighty. Go back to the generator and lay your hands on it and say, this generator, you can't be a devourer. I speak to you now, start working. And he went, I was saying, oh God, help me. Let it be. I was in my room and I heard the generator start. Immediately. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that strengthened my faith. If generator, could, a ordinary generator, mechanical stuff who hear the word of God spoken, then anything, anything, anything will yield when the word of God is spoken with faith. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ said in John 16 verse 23, it says, whatsoever you ask in my name, Whatsoever, anything you ask in my name, believe in. I like the way Amplified Bible puts it. Do you mind reading that for me again, please? Um, John 16, verse 23. Okay. Thank you. As presenting all that I am, that's what makes it work. Whatever you ask the Lord in my name, as pertaining to what I am, knowing who God is makes the word of God potent in your mouth. Hallelujah. I will say it again. Knowing who Christ is makes the word of God potent, powerful, unresistible. In your mouth. Hallelujah. That's why Paul prayed that I may know you. We need to know who Jesus Christ is. We need to know that there's no limit to Jesus Christ. 
We need to know that Jesus Christ has come to give us life and life abundantly. He said, the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So when you speak the word of God as a spirit, it becomes life. Hallelujah. It means any dead situation you speak to, the word of God, it comes alive. Glory. In Romans chapter 4, verse 7, this is the way God talks. That, that place says, The Lord that calleth things to be as if they were, He calls them to be as if they were. So when God sees, for example, if He sees this chair, He can decide to call it goat. And what happens? If God calls this chair goat, what happens? Goat appears. He called things to be as if they were. We are created in God's image. That means we are created in God's character. Whatever God does, we are also meant to do because we are sons of God. Remember, as many as received him, as believed him, he has given them, they have been given the power, the right to become sons of God. So whatever God does, we are meant to do it as well. So I talk like God. Hallelujah. To <laughs> glory. I talk like God. To any religious mind, is, is, blasph is blasphemous. When a lion gives birth to a lion, the cob, is, is it called cob? Is it called a cob? Yes, a cob behaves like the big lion. It mimics the big lion until it grows. And when it becomes a lion, he acts like a lion. I talk like God anywhere I go. I talk big, and I see big things. Hallelujah. I saw a woman coming to where I was ministering. She, was, she appeared so dejected. We were singing, we were doing this. She was... So immediately the Spirit of the Lord said, this lady is... I mean, had spirit of depression. She was just, she was, I mean, her face looked so melancholic. And so as soon as the meeting finished, I said, Madam, God is saying you will start smiling uncontrollably now. Huh. When I said it, I, I, I said, my God, please help me. <laughs> and the moment we prayed on this woman, the Spirit of God touched her and started laughing uncontrollably. On, on Up to about three weeks ago, I still call to ask about this woman. This woman is the most cheerful person on earth. Hallelujah. When we know our God, we start talking like God. When you see cancer, you speak to cancer. Say, be healed in the name of Jesus. And you see the cancer drying up. Hallelujah. There's no limit. There's no limit to the power of God. <laughs> Glory. Who? This is the way God talks. When he saw darkness, he saw light in it. And call it what? Light. And there was light. Therefore, I speak as God speaks. To everything that represents darkness in your life, no matter what it is, I speak the word of God. Light, be in the name of Jesus. Let somebody say amen to that. Amen. God is the author of light. In him there is no darkness. God called light out of darkness and it emerged immediately. The darkness in my life, the darkness in your life, must be vehemently resisted. We shouldn't play with any form of darkness in our lives. Playing with any unpleasant situation is playing with our life. No. The only anger must, uh, uh, must just come up. Must come up. I can't, I can't see. I can't see anything that... God has not put in my life and I keep on, 
uh, romancing it. No, it is impossible. Anything that is, that is an alien in my body or around me, I resist it vehemently with the word of God. And I've been seeing, the, I've, I've been seeing results upon results. Before God could create a thing, I've said it before, he got rid of darkness. And because your father, who is in heaven, is a creator, you are also a creator. We are all creators. <laughs> to, another, to a religious mind again, that's blasphemous. But you are a creator. You are a wealth creator. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. When God speaks, His word is loaded, is impregnated, is loaded with faith. Paul was saying, I was trying to research the, the verse, I couldn't get it. Paul was saying somewhere, said, God himself had to use faith to create the world. Has anybody heard that before? God himself had to use faith to create the world, to speak things into being. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, the Father in heaven, we do unto you. Did you know God created this whole world with his words? The only thing he didn't speak into being is who? You. He didn't speak me into being. He created, he molded me. He took his time to mold me to be like who? Like him. So if God did not speak you into being, that means he wanted you to be like him, to also start speaking things into being. That's, how, that's why he created you. He didn't speak you into being like other creations. So you can't compare yourself to a chimpanzee. Although some, some call some racist monkeys, but that's ignorance. But you, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> you can't compare yourself to monkey because monkey was spoken into being, but you were created, molded in his image, in his character. This is why this whole world is being maintained by the spoken word of God. This whole world is being sustained by the spoken word of God. If you need changes in your life, you can't afford to keep your mouth shut. You can't afford to keep your mind shut. You need to dwell upon the word of God. You need to keep on praying that God should put his word in your mouth, in your spirit, so that you can speak it out. <laughs> Did you know what God told the Israelites, when they were in the wilderness. Let's go to Numbers 14, 28. Numbers 14, 28. The Israelites in the wilderness, they forgot how God had led them out of slavery. When they got into the wilderness, they began to murmur. And one day, God called Moses and said, Say to them, As long as I live, declares the Lord, What you have said in my hearing, I will do what? I will do to you. Whatever you have said in my hearing so far, then I will do, I will, I will do it to you. What are you saying in God's hearing? A, a religious mind will also say that was then in the Old Testament. This is a principle that works, whether in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. 
whatever you speak in God's hearing, it does unto you. It's even worse if you don't speak. Hallelujah. This is what makes me to believe that anywhere I go when I minister, any deaf person must begin to speak. I caught a light in this. And anywhere I minister, deaf people must speak because they must start speaking the word of God. And it's been working. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Who can bear me a witness how God's word works? Once you catch the light, it works. It's more than what people call magic. I don't know how best I can express myself. But all you should be praying for is God. Let me receive light from this world. And the moment light emerges, then breakthrough comes. No matter how difficult the situation is. I was having a, I, I was having a, a relationship problem. Marital problem. And people came and suggested so many things. And I said, no. The word of God is a light unto my, is a lamp unto my path, I mean unto my feet, and light unto my path. I'm waiting to receive the word of God. And the moment I receive it, light will shine in my marriage. And to God be the glory, the word of the Lord came one day, and I spoke it out. You remember, God's word is irresistible. No matter how hardened the person is, when the word of God shines through, it breaks the hardship. I mean, it breaks the hardness of the heart. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And the light shone through, and peace came. <laughs> Glory. Glory. That thing you're fighting against, you've been fighting, you've been, you've been wrestling with, you don't need to wrestle with them. You don't need to wrestle with that situation. Pray to receive the light. And the day you receive the light is the end of that situation. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's read Psalm 39 verse 1. Quickly, the Lord says there, I will guide my way so that I may not sin with my tongue. That is uh, David. I will guide my mouth with a muzzle as long as the wicked are in my presence. What do you speak? Let me analyze how the heavenly beings operate, the angels, the celestial. They are poised to act on what you say. Even the angels of the devil, angels of light, they are ready to pounce on what you say. So whatever you say is what they pounce on. So if you say, even if like somebody say, oh, I'm sick, yeah, of course. The angel of the devil will pounce on it and will make you sick the more. You can't say I'm sick when you feel sick. No. Somebody call, calls it denier. It's never a denier. <laughs> Once the word of God is in your spirit, you can't say you are sick. If you say, oh, I have, um, I have malaria. Oh, the devil always, almost made me say I have, mal I have malaria last time I went to Nigeria. You know, for the past six years, when I caught the light, I said I would never have malaria. Until now, to the glory of God, no malaria. Last year, I was feeling feverish. I nearly said, oh, no, no. I said, devil, you're a liar. I, f I feel feverish, but no matter what is wrong with me, it's a name. And the Lord is seated, where I'm seated with my Christ is above every other name. So at the name of Jesus Christ, whatever you are, whoever you are, get out of my body. I was annoyed. <laughs> And before I knew it, within 12 hours, I was bouncing again. I nearly said it. You know, angels are ready to pounce on what you say. 
mind what to say. Some people are experts in describing their illness. No, you are reinforcing what the doctor has said. Some might not believe what I want to say, but I will say it. Some of our doctors are, dev, are devil agents. You, you might not believe it, but I, believe, but I know what I'm saying. Devil will speak through them, and the moment you believe it, it happens immediately. I've seen it happen. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. In the school of faith, it is not called denier. It is only denier when you don't know who you believe. Anyway, if you call it denier, I've always denied it, and it has never happened to me. I've, never, I've always denied it in the life of my children. It has never happened. So you can call it denier, but it, it should never happen. Hallelujah. Hmm. Proverbs 6 2 says, You have been trapped by the words of your lips. You have been ensnared by the words of your mouth. What are you saying? Are you saying, are you repeating negative reports? Whose report are you going to believe? Anytime you receive a bad report, counteract it with God, with what God says. With what God says, you need to counteract it immediately. That's why we need to get the word of God in our spirit every day. We shouldn't joke with the word of God because that is the only, um, only weapon we have to fight against the devil. This world we live in is world planet. It's world planet. You have been redeemed by the word of God. You have been restored by the word of God. You are going to break through by the word of God. You are going to overcome that problem, that situation of yours right now, by the word of God. There's no secrecy about it. There's no other way around it. It's only by the word of God. In, Psalm, I mean, in Genesis 128, when God created man, he said, be fruitful, subdue. God wasn't just communicating. Do you know what he was doing there? <laughs> Hallelujah. He was transferring power into them. He said, subdue. Replenish. He was transferring power unto man. God kind of faith is what we should have today as believers. We ought to walk down the, green, the, the street of Greensby, Glassby, to the glory of God, and communicate the word of God. By communicating the word of God, we are transferring power. We are transferring life into the whole area. We are decreeing and declaring into the atmosphere. We are speaking blessing and transferring power. We ought to do that. But this is not happening because we still don't have the God kind of faith. Mark 11, 21, 22 says, we should have faith in God. That, mean, that is, have God kind of faith. Have God kind of faith. And what is God kind of faith? It's speaking things to be as if they are or they were. The faith that believes that what you say will come to pass. Jesus Christ, when he, sh when he spoke to that tree, his word became herbicide. It became what? A herbicide that killed that tree. The word of God you speak today might also be an antidepressant. Hallelujah. Might also, might also be 
um, anti what again? Anti malaria. Might even be spiritual. What do you call it now? Spiritual. Uh, that's why I don't because I don't dwell on them. The treatment cancerous people. Chemotherapy. Yes. Yes. Radiotherapy. That's it. Those are worldly stuff, but the word of God in your spirit, whatever you desire in your heart, it says, I will grant you the desire of your heart. Once you speak whatever you desire, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He said it because he was a shepherd. He said it because he understood how a shepherd looks after sheep. So, you can apply the word of God to be whatever you want it to be in your life. And it will surely address the situation. Whose report are you going to believe? I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Those things that appear to be giant, they can be slain by the word of God. The giant approached David. But David said, in the name of the Lord, he spoke the word of God and he threw that stone. That stone didn't kill Goliath. It was the word of God that slain Goliath. What's that giant? What's that mountain? What's that mountain? What's that giant? The book of Revelation says, and they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies. We all understand what the, blood of, what the blood of Jesus is, but what is their word of testimonies? Is The word of testimony is saying, testifying how strong, how limitless, the name of Jesus Christ is testifying to it. That's the only way we will overcome. If they overcame him by those two things, then we are also going to overcome by these two things. Hallelujah. What the devil wants, I'm going back to where I began from, is to steal to kill, and to destroy. What the devil is doing to our church of today is, is making the church carnal. Anything spiritual, some people hear it with disdain. They, they look at it as if one is uh, deluded. One is grandiose. No, there is no grandiosity in the spirit. <laughs> I choose to be grandiose in the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. I choose to be proud in the Lord. Yes. Devil is stealing our people away. People are dying unnecessarily. Cheap diseases are killing our people. If it's happening in our churches, how do we go out there and say something? The great revival that ever happened in Europe, as well as in England, happened because some men of God chose to take the word of God literally. People were dying outside. In South Africa, bubonic was an epidemic then. It was killing people. But a man of God chose to believe the word of God. And people were dying. He said, no, you will no longer die in this church. And the death stopped. And when people see, when people saw what was happening in the church, they troop into the church. Oh my. Supernatural must happen in the church for people to come into the church. Hallelujah. And what brings supernatural into the church is the word of God. I was listening to a great man of God in America just a week, just a week ago. He said, Miracles. Prophecies, all those things will not establish a church. 
what we establish a church is the word of God. And the word of God in, in our spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus that as we look up unto God, as we desire to have the word of God in our spirit, the Lord will pour his words upon us and we will begin to live in the supernatural. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, just as Kenny finished there, I really felt the Lord saying that people need to see you or me before you go and, you know, get some understanding on the power of what we say. And so I'm sure you'll be around for a little bit, Kenny, won't you? And there's, um, there's a book that you can get as well by a guy who I've forgotten. But anyway, but it's really interesting because it's called Hung by the Tongue. And, you know, we will either hang ourselves by what we say or we'll free ourselves by what we say. And so that was really good, Kenny. Thank you for that. And the Word of God will work in any situation. Nothing is beyond the power of the faith of God. Amen? So see Kenny or me even if you want to. Anybody got anything they want to add to that? Anything to encourage us with at the end? You know, I've got a little joke for you but it actually ties in with what you're saying. So there's these three fishermen, and uh, they're unloading the car to go fishing, and this angel appears, and this angel says to the first fisherman, whatever you want, I'll do. So he says, well, he says, he says I've had arthritis for years and years in my back, and he said it gets in the way, and so this angel, boom, arthritis this man totally healed marvelous so his friend sees this and the angel goes to the second fisherman and he's got these glasses that are like jam jars real thick glasses and the, and the angel says what about you and he says i'm fed up with these glasses i've had these glasses all my life and the angel takes the glasses off throws them in the lake and as they hit the water boom perfect he turns to go to the third one and the man says whoa stay away from me I want a disability pension just let that settle in for a little while well, we joke about that but anyway we have what we say and if we say we're on a disability then we, we have what we say amen so has anybody got anything that they want to add praise God God it's not karaoke this week. You're not going to do karaoke, are you? <laughs> yeah. Right, thank, thank you. So if I can get this right. I heard today at a church, um, a lady went from south, from a, down south from a church, went out to Iraq and saw the plight that they're in. And um, she came home and asked for um, clothing, warm clothing. So... Their church, they got up a lorry load, and, but she sent the word out around the churches around the country. And five lorry loads went out to Iraq, all really good warm clothing, really, you know, she sorted them out, real good stuff. And uh, that warmed my heart. Um, amen. It's just awesome. You know, Britain's good when it comes to charity. We put our six foot walls up between our gardens and all that, but. You know, when it comes to charity, they're really generous. I've noticed that in the shoe boxes. There's piles of stuff coming in. It's uplifting. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.